Coach, is there a certain amount of anxiousness that you have leading into this game, you and your squad? A little excitement, I would say, you know, for us. Um, getting back to this point, uh, you know, it's been a long journey for us. You know, trying to get, get off the high of last year's Final Four run, refocusing the team. And I, 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 I've just never seen anything like what we've dealt with this year from an injury standpoint and COVID standpoint. Just keep, keeps keeps continuing uh, with Jaime's situation. So uh, the guys have been unbelievably resilient. And uh, I don't think people understand how hard it is to come, like, to come in and one day Johnny's not playing because he's got COVID with no preparation, you know. And that happened to us that one day Tiger's not playing and with no preparation and win those games. So. Uh, we got all that behind us, and uh, hopefully there's four left. <laughs> okay. But we're focused on Carolina. So, but yeah, we're just—I'd say more excited. What's the situation with Hardy? How is the ankle? Day to day, play? he didn't practice today. You think he'll play on Friday? I don't know. If I had that answer, then I'd be. The problem is, I got to have two game plans. One with him, one without him. It's just the way. But we've been doing it all year, so. Uh, you know, we'll see. But, uh, you know, I got full confidence in Peyton and, and Jalen Clark and the rest of the guys. In your coaching experience, have you had a team that's ha been this resilient facing this much no. adversity? I haven't had a team face this much adversity other than last year. <laughs> you know, we lost our top recruit, then we lost our, our NBA prospect, Chris Smith, but then, then Jalen Hill retired, and we, we went made the Final Four. So it's really these guys. You know, I give them all the credit. You know, Tiger and Jules, Johnny, Cody, you know, and Jaime. You know, those guys have been, but you know, like David, we just got, these guys have been together a long time. I think it matters. You know, I'm glad you're here. I'll take you back to something because, you know, <laughs> Mike Warren was at practice and he was saying, well, how come you didn't bring Logan Johnson with you? And in my first year, you know, it was a lot. Why doesn't he sign another guard? And I said, well, because I thought for us to get where I came here to, to, and do what I came here to do and get where you want to go. I needed to build with these guys. And, you know, we took some lumps my first year, the first couple months. And one of those lumps was Carolina and Vegas. Um, but I think we're, we are where we are because of, you know, the loyalty they showed me by staying. And I showed them by not bringing in other guys um, and just, you know, adding pieces where we needed them. Uh, we had too many young guards. Uh, and it's interesting because R.J. Davis, Carolina's point guard, uh, I recruited him for two years. Mm -hmm. I've lived with him at Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Lived with him. <laughs> uh, but I had to walk away from it when I came here. Because, not that I would have gotten him. Uh, I think we could have. But, uh, you know, we had Tiger. And I just thought, you know, I'm going to build with these guys, and it's worked out. What, what's your fa favorite aspect of Jaime's toughness, and how has it helped the team? Um, I would say his spirit, like it's part you guys, I mean, obviously he's turned into a great scorer, which has helped us, um, especially when Johnny was struggling. Uh, but I think what you guys don't see is the huddles in the locker room. And from the time that uh, we played Michigan State and Maui his freshman year, he went off in the locker room about we got to compete, we got to be more physical. Uh, you know, he's, he went into the starting lineup. You know, he's helped build the program back to where it belongs, you know. Because uh, everything we've been through, you know, I think you said everything we've been through this year, with all of that, we've been ranked in the top 10, 5, or 15 the whole season. And I would say we should have never been out of the top 10, but that's the West Coast bias. <laughs> but, you know, what you don't see is his, his uh, just the attitude of he, he, he believes you know, he, he, he just, he's got no back down in him. Like, I have no doubt, like, if he would have played baseball, he, he'd have made it in baseball. You know, he's just one of those guys. I mean, he was going to make it. Coach, how much does it help the fact that you've been to a Sweet 16 just last year, you made it to a Final Four, that experience, as opposed to going in never having done it? Um, I think it did help us in the first two games. I think uh, helped us, to, I think it helped us down the stretch against Akron. You know, that's some teams. It was just it wasn't our night, and we just said, no, no, we're not, we're not going home. The guys said, they're, you know, they just found a way to win. Um, they had, they had been through that type of stuff, um, and I think, uh, you know, against St. Mary's, people started thinking, 
Well, they were in trouble because the way we played against Akron, but that was disrespectful to Akron. Our guys knew. So I, I think a bit helps. It, that I'd rather have a team that's been there than a team that hasn't. Coach, I wanted to ask you more off the court. You kind of mentioned it in Portland, like they like to play Super Smash Brothers video games, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Um, is that kind of how they bond? They like to get back to the hotel room and play video games? You know, can you talk about that a little I bit? I mean, I'm sure they'd like to go out, but I don't let them. <laughs> 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 so, I mean, you know, it, you spend a lot of time together on, on you know, it's, it's just such a year-round sport now. You know, these guys spend a, a ton of time together. So, uh, you know, with technology. I mean, they, they, um, I know they do other things, but, I, you know, I hear them screaming and yelling, like, what is going on? And, then, you know, they're arguing about who's the best player and all this. Do you get a kick out of how important it is to them? Yes. Does that get, do you get a yes. kick out of that? I think it's, yeah, I'm worried about, <laughs> you know, you say, hey, I'm, I'm anxious. They're having a blast. <laughs> I'm watching film. I'm trying to make sure I get some rest and pound vitamins and fluids. They're laughing, having the time of their life, which is how it should be. You know, I don't want them to realize that, you know, the, the magnitude of the situation, everybody's here. You, you know, let, let, they need to have fun and enjoy every minute of it. Because they're going to find out like the rest of us, you know, getting the jobs overrated. <laughs> <laughs> You had a, when you when you were supposed to play Carolina the first time, yes. As a team, did you ever get to the scouts? Yes. You did? Well, Coach Savino did. I was sick. Well, at, at, I was under the covers, <laughs> and then the game got canceled. As, as a team, when they yes, okay. yes, but that's a long time ago. But they see them on television. I mean, they you know they they kind of know a little bit. So, but we got all week to prepare. Um, they were very, they they were all watching the Baylor game. And then at, uh, they came. We came in to do our walkthrough, uh, our game day walkthrough for St. Mary's, and Baylor was down twenty something. So they, when we got out, my dad was in the walkthrough. He said, "Hey, it's an overtime," and everybody was, "What are you talking about?" And we didn't know. We didn't know what had happened with Brady Manick. And so, but uh, yeah, so I think they know him a little bit. But we've started. You know, today was our first day giving the guys North Carolina scouting. Coach. Coach, because of the, the craziness of this tournament so far, have you kind of warned your team about, oh, look at look what happened to them, and they were a high seed, and so we better oh, yeah. be on our P's and Q's. Well, it's every year. You know, the guy, they're well aware Kentucky lost, you know, running out to play Akron. But we, I, it, the advantage that we had last year uh, that maybe some people didn't respect us, uh, and that's all, we haven't had that advantage all year this year. So, uh, you know, my, my thing is with the guys, I told them today, you you know, make sure you erase the eight next to Carolina. Sort of one there. They won at Duke. They beat Marquette 30. They had Baylor, you know, buried until Manic got, got the F2 foul and went out of the game. I mean, that, they're playing as good as anything. And that's all that matters. So uh, you just got to make sure that uh, we keep the same mindset of respect for our opponents. And that, that's huge. We have to have great respect for them and their talent. Because they, they're starting fives as good as anybody in America. Johnny got going in the second half. There were some screens for him, some mm -hmm. plays run for him. Uh, how nice was that? How important is he to maybe not get back to the level of last year, but to be an integral part of the offense? Oh, it's forward? huge. Yeah, I think, you know, what I talk to the guys about after the Akron game is um, that performance. You know, like at this time of year, Coaching is only going to take you so far. Also, play, you know, I talk a lot about defense and playing hard. Yeah, it's only going to take you so far. You know, you got to quote Bill Walton some. You know, hey, give me offense, man. <laughs> you, you know, because in all seriousness, like the teams that advance, like you know, Johnny performed last year. You know, and there was other games where other guys. I mean, Tiger was great at times. Cody was great at times, obviously. So. Uh, we got to have guys continue to step up and perform. Like there was a point where we, we were with St. Mary's and it was, it was like Tiger just said, I'm, I'm scoring on this guy. Hi, man, I'm scoring on, like, I'm scoring on this guy. And then Johnny started. So, you, you know, we got to finish. You got to play up to your capability. I mean, you got to be ready, man. It, it, you you got to go out there with confidence and let it rip. You got to, you got to perform because, you know, against team, like a team like North Carolina to think you're going to, be able to just win it with great defense, you know, in, in a rock fight is probably not realistic. They got too much firepower. Like we're going to have to match. There's times in a the game where we're going to have to match them and score with them. 
And I think that's the rest of the tournament. Have you noticed teams game planning for Johnny ever all since year. last year? Oh, yeah. Team's been all over him all year. Yeah. You know, it's hard for him to get off the screen. They've been overplaying all year. Playing in Portland is one thing. Going across the country, going to Philadelphia is completely another thing. You won't probably have as many fans as North Carolina will be there. How much of a prepare for that at all, or is that just? Kind of I prepare for that. I try to prepare. I try to do a lot of things that everyone doesn't work, <laughs> but I try to prepare for that all the time. You know, I, I don't believe that um, that fans should matter. I try to teach these guys about life. Um, you know, again, having Coach Wooden's job. Um, so, like, when things, you shouldn't have to have everything your way to play well. Because in life, you're not going to have everything your way. When you get out of here, like, this is where, they, look where they go to school. Everything, there's no better place. Um, unless you're afraid of competition, I don't know why you wouldn't want to come here if you're a basketball player. You're in the best campus and the best neighborhood in the world. <laughs> so, but it ain't going to be like that for them all the time. So we talk about that every day, all the time, about how to have t mental toughness about yourself. So, uh, you know, I haven't had a cheesesteak in a while that's any good, so mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to Delisandro's mm -hmm. getting, getting a good cheesesteak. So we'll have enough fans. I think we got some Wall Street people. You know, there's a lot of New York people, I think, that are booing people, and there's planes coming. But at the end of the day, it shouldn't matter. Um, We're playing. There's only 16 of us playing. As, as we should, be, you know, that's, I don't care where we're playing. How do Jalen and Peyton fit into that game plan which time is not ready? Um, well, we got options. You can play big with Cody and Miles or Kenny. You know, Kenny's ready to play. He just, you know, it's just hard for me to get him in there. Um, or you can, you, you, you can match up with a smaller lineup, with, you know. Because Manic is a great shooter, Brady Manic, but he can also post up, you know, so. What we usually do is we, we, tr we have a plan on which one we're going to try, and then you got to have plan B if you need to go to plan B. But i got full confidence in those guys because, you know, they're both very quick off the dribble. So if we are playing small, you know, they got to guard us too. So, you know, Peyton's really playing well right now. Jalen's been rock solid since, you know, he's been healthy. But Peyton's playing well right now. At 6'5", at is there a ceiling to the uh, height of guys that uh, Jalen can guard? Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> I think he would tell you no. He figured, he knows how to guard everybody. That's probably because practicing against Isaiah and Evan and the, the Compton Magic, you know. And um, I know his Evan didn't play the last summer, so Jalen's last AAU summer, Adidas won every tournament. His team won every tournament, and you know he he guarded point guards to to, to five men that whole summer. 